Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock for about 30 minutes from 2 to 2.30. Uh, we are broadcasting from the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, we're a show that talks about successful stories in Hawaii, both the companies and the individuals. And we have a lot of success stories here in Hawaii. Uh, and today we're going to talk to two of them, actually. Uh, I've got Jan Ka'eo, who is the owner of Dale Carnegie Training Hawaii and Guam. And I also have Tom Jones, who's the owner of Kyotaku, uh, who is a very popular Japanese restaurant here in town. So I want to welcome Jan and Tom to the show. Thanks very much, Reg. Thank uh, you, Reg. Jen, you, um, you've been on the show before, and we've talked a little bit about Dale Carnegie and, and what you do and how you do it. Um, and you brought a, a person that's going to maybe do a little testimonial for you. I guess uh, Tom has been a user and a practicer of some of the skills from um, Dale Carnegie. So can you just share with us a little bit for the audience uh, what exactly Dale Carnegie is and maybe introduce uh, Tom, and, and Tom can share why he's here. Sure, absolutely. So Dale Carnegie has been around for 105 years, um, often credited as being the founder of workplace learning. Um, he started a whole new industry called uh, per uh, personal development, and uh, from his uh, teachings that he gathered 105 years ago um, came some of the greats that we recognize today, like the Tony Robbins and the... Mm -hmm. um, uh, the in, uh, so, organizations like that. Yeah, some of those household names that we kind of grew up with, yeah. at least some of us grew up with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dale Carnegie actually recognized that if individuals and teams develop self-confidence, improve their communication skills, improve their leadership skills and their human relations skills, their people skills, and learn how to control their attitude and stress and worry, that they could become even more successful in their workplace and in their right. home. Actually, uh, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this was one of the first individuals that actually kind of developed that interpersonal skill type of program that, right. you know, that everybody needs to have inside the workplace. Right. You know, one of the top selling books of all time is um, his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. And as recent as last year, Entrepreneur Magazine said that it is the one book that entrepreneurs should read every single year to be successful in their business. Mm -hmm. Right. No, that, that's a great, great background. And I guess you carry on that legacy here by offering classes and, and how-to sessions on how it all works. Right. We have classes in, um, well, we have courses with Dale Carnegie. We have uh, a Dale Carnegie course. We have sales training. I come from a sales and leadership background. We have uh, leadership courses, both workshops and time-space courses to develop leadership skills. And uh, we have live as well as live online training. Wow, that's a lot of, a lot of going on. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess, uh, Tom, you, you've been a practitioner. You've gone through some of these programs? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, interestingly, I, I took the Dale Carnegie course uh, a little over 30 years ago when I was living in Tokyo training as a, as a Japanese chef. And uh, I met uh, the uh, franchisee from Japan, Frank Mochizuki, at a restaurant. And he uh, convinced me to take the, the class. I took it in English, of course. He was looking for English speakers uh, to be in his English classes because most of the, the uh, participants were Japanese. But they were, uh, I guess, back in the in the 80s, they were, you know, Japan was pretty much taking over the world, much like China is today. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, there were a lot of Japanese executives in these courses. And so he asked if I would, you know, take the course. And I said, sure. And uh, so uh, I found the course at that point in my life, I was probably about 29 at the time, to be just really, really um, foundational in helping me develop skills that I would need as I would, you know, came back to the United States with uh, the Japanese company. No, I'm just curious, um, and I've got a little bit of a, an international background. I ran the international operations for the Bank of Hawaii for a while, so I spent some time in Tokyo and, and Hong Kong and different places. Did, does the course change at all by offering it in Japan as opposed to it being offered in the U.S.? Is there anything different, or is it pretty much the same? I think it's, you know, the, the Dale Carnegie you know, instruction is provided all around the world. So it's a you know, global uh, company with local reach. Um, but uh, you know, back in the day, back then, uh, Japan was trying to emulate 
America. So the course was very much American style, uh, with maybe a few adjustments for, for cultural differences. But now as it's developed, there are more cultural differences being taught in, in you know, different uh, countries around the world, I think. Interesting. Yeah. That's, that's good. Uh, and so you, you've had some really good success with taking the class. And I guess you have kind of worked with uh, Jan over the years on this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I, again, I found it to be really helpful in my own development. And so I recognized early on when I came to, the, to uh, back to Hawaii, from Japan that uh, managers that work for me would benefit, you know, in confidence, uh, organizational skills and communication skills. So uh, since I came to Hawaii in 1986, I've had uh, managers that work for me in, in all the different companies, including my own company now, Kyotaku, uh, take the Dale Carnegie course and leadership courses and workshops as well. So is this uh, a benefit or, or I guess training that you provide to some of your key employees? Absolutely. Uh, I think employees um, respond very quickly uh, to um, investments that you make in them. They appreciate the fact that you see value in them and that you want to help them improve. So immediately just upon offering you know, them uh, an opportunity to take the course, you get a, a positive response from them. But then of course they take the course and they start to develop skills and um, abilities that you know they hadn't had before, and it really helps them do their their jobs a lot, you know, a lot more effectively. Real positive for the morale too, I would imagine. Absolutely, yeah. you know, and and in today's uh, job market, you know, uh, there's uh, low unemployment here. Uh, businesses, especially restaurants, but all businesses are really looking for for quality employees. So it's very difficult to find them. So if you can't find them you have to develop them within your own organization. And sometimes you don't have a whole lot of choice. You've got to develop them. <laughs> That's right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's a tough environment. So, Jan, so you, you offer this not only to individuals, but then also to companies, too. I mean, it can be training for more than one person in a company. Absolutely. And when teams actually come into our programs and they learn together, they have a shared learning experience, the benefit to the employer is exponential because now you have a team of people that are speaking the same language, that are looking to um, win people to their way of thinking so that they can be more effective managers and more effective team leaders. Um, it's it's a win-win all the way around. Well, and I keep hearing that word team. I guess it really br uh, brings some cohesiveness to that team that's in the, the company or in, you know, I guess in your case, Tom, you've got different locations. So Absolutely. So you've got different teams in each place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this really brings them together. Well, you, have, you have teams at different restaurants. You have teams within teams. You have the front of the house. And especially in the restaurant business, the front of the house and the back of the house, they've got to get along <laughs> in order to service the guests, so it's really important. Yeah, that, that's very good. And I, again, what these courses can be done, I guess, on site? Are there any online capabilities? I mean, yes, we do have live online programs. I was just yeah. on uh, a call today with um, a local uh, decision maker that was saying, gosh, you know, these programs are done by certified trainers. Are they relevant to us here in Hawaii? And I said, absolutely. You know, I'm getting a lot of local companies who are uh, investing in live online training because it's maybe more convenient mm -hmm. and what I'm finding within large companies is they're sharing the good news with different departments and so I'm seeing enrollments come in from one department then from another department all from the same company so that's another way to receive training um, on their own terms. See and that, that's a great convenience because sometimes it's hard to get people to come together all at the same time yes. at the same place you know and because we are dispersed out a little bit right. um, and until we get the rail going it's going to be tough with that traffic so <laughs> that's right. um, you know it's good to have that online option right. you know, right. that's, that's good um, and if people wanted to find out more information about some of these courses where could they go well they should go right to our website um, it's uh, hawaii.dalecarnegie.com and you can see a list of our live programs that are scheduled between now and uh, we are uh, scheduled all the way to April of next year as well as our live online programs are at the bottom of that list very good so that, that's a, a great resource to have, and I guess, Tom, you, you give it five stars. I mean, it's a great way to train the staff, and, and you've gotten a lot of benefit out of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you've also got some other interesting classes. It's not always self-improvement. I mean, right. you've got other types, you know, and one that I've seen a flyer on recently is uh, working with multi-generations, you know, millennials and, and so forth. Um, absolutely. You know, and so that's something that's coming up soon? Yeah, absolutely. You know. Never before have we had four generations in the, in the workplace. And you can have a millennial, so someone who is between 20 and 35 years old, that actually is managing someone who's old enough to be their grandmother. 
and and learning how to relate and connect with that generation it's very different from your own generation and so it's not just one-sided anymore it's not sure. the the person that is 60 that is managing a 20 year old you could have the exact opposite or you could have multiple generations um, in uh, different hierarchies of the organization reporting to or working for each other and so learning how to connect learning how to be relatable learning how to inspire someone who is old enough to be your mom or your grandmother is a skill that is really valuable to the millennial generation well and what's interesting here in hawaii is not only do you have the different generational issues but you also have different cultural aspects too yes. of what's going on which makes it interesting yes um, and then you throw customers into the mix I mean, you've got a, you know, particularly in a restaurant environment, mm -hmm. I can imagine it's a very dynamic type of uh, activity going on in yeah, there. Ab absolutely. The restaurant industry is a lot of people serving a lot of people. And so there are human relations going on all over the, you know, the place. Yeah. And uh, it, yeah, it's, it's important more than ever to be able to communicate effectively and with confidence to uh, not only your employees, but also to your guests. Um, and the guest expectation now is higher than ever with the, you know, mm. um, development of these food, you know, the, the, the food channel, the food network, and, and so forth. People go to restaurants with much higher levels of expectation than ever before, and so they're expecting us to be able to deliver, so we've got to do our job. You know, and I think, and I can speak from personal experiences, that I've got a, a millennial, somebody who's in their 25, 28 range, uh, living in San Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, working for a company called Deloitte. Um, so he's got a little, you know, expendable income. He and I got to tell you, he's a foodie. Mm. I mean, they go to restaurants. They he practices cooking. I guess they got services now where they'll send the food to the house with instructions oh, on how to yeah. prepare Absolutely. it. Sure. Yes. They have all this, and so when they go out, they're going not only for the food but also for the experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a component in there that. I never really paid much attention to, but it becomes very important mm -hmm. in today's, I guess, world. Yes, Absolutely. and when the experience is good or bad, they can actually communicate um, oh. that satisfaction <laughs> or not. Instantaneously. <laughs> With everyone. Yes. So yes. customer service is another area that um, we've had a lot of interest in, and in just recognizing how to take good customer service to great, you know, how to be exceptional in that customer to customer uh, employee to customer contact yeah and it, I guess and there's an awful lot of training that goes into that you know and maybe awareness is probably the most important component mm -hmm. is that they just have to be aware of the different values that different cultures and different age groups uh, have and both in a, an employee relationship as well as a, a guest or a customer relationship mm -hmm. and that is that part of what you also bring some yes you know, training absolutely to? and you know as Tom was speaking you know he has had a four restaurants that are um, very successful in, in a consistent delivery and consistent experience. And so in the old days, we used to think of training as um, remedial training, something you did when something wasn't going right. But in today's world, it's about competing at a higher level. And so taking, I, I just work with an organization that is um, number three in their category of businesses and they want to be number two they want to be number one and so it's not that they're doing anything that's negative but they want to take that customer experience to the next level right. so they have a company-wide initiative to uh, to boost their level of customer experience they're going to measure it and uh, we were lucky to be a part of that experience you know Jan I, I want to talk a little bit more about that but we're going to take a short break okay and then when we come back let's revisit that point and maybe get different perspectives on how we we move that that mark up to the different levels mm -hmm. uh, but this is business in hawaii with reg baker uh, we're talking with dale carnegie today and then also a restaurant group uh, kyotaku uh, and we'll be right back in about 60 seconds For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. 
Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're talking today with Jan Kaeo uh, from Dale Carnegie and also with Tom Jones from Kiyotaku Restaurant Group. Uh, we were just beginning to talk about raising the customer experience bar up a little bit and, and how we have training that can help uh, companies do that. Uh, and then we also have Tom that might speak a little bit to the hands-on uh, approach to, to doing this, so taking the training to implementation. So Jen, can you just, what type of programs or how would you get companies to provide this training to increase that customer service bar? Well, it all begins with making sure that the team has an attitude for service, mm -hmm. has a desire to actually be of service mm -hmm. to um, it, whether it be their internal customers, their fellow co-workers, or to their uh, external customers. And you'll be, you be surprised at uh, the sometimes lack of awareness of how that individual will impact their world around them. They never recognize that uh, a bad attitude could have such a negative effect, not just one time, but down the line in their entire department. And so it's creating that awareness and then giving them tools to, once they recognize that the behavior is not what they want it to be, giving them tools to be able to change that. You know, from my experience, and, and you can speak to this, but from what I have learned over the years, I can teach people almost anything that they need to know, but one thing that I have a hard time teaching them is attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, attitude is, is a lot of times ingrained in that person, and that's probably the one trait that I look for the most when I go out and hire somebody mm -hmm. is that they have to have the attitude to, to learn, to cooperate, to communicate, um, to collaborate. Um, does that make sense? Does yeah. that, uh, Absolutely. It begins with it begins with attitude, and one of the key things is to help them understand what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. yep. um, it, we all know what the uh, manager wants. They want, or the owner wants. They want uh, higher production at less cost and more revenue. That's mm -hmm. kind of a basic. Right. But the employee needs to know what's in it for them if they have a better right. attitude, if they deliver higher level of customer services, right. they sell more. Right. So much, so much of employee engagement is not so much uh, attitude is important but a lot of the attitude from employees is driven by the way we treat them mm -hmm. and so we have a tremendous amount of control over their level of engagement by the way that we interact with them the goals we set for them and so our communication skills to to our employees in many ways drives their engagement and yeah. what we call their attitude As, well attitude is a two-way street right. right absolutely you know you gotta have the proper attitude to work with the employees and empower them and give them what they need to be successful exactly uh, right. and they have to know what's in it for them yeah. um, you know and it, it all pays off in right. the end I mean you have it results in happy customers that feel that they're getting the value and they'll come back and it, it, it kind of all fits together. Mm -hmm. Right. So from an implementation standpoint, Tom, um, how do you, assuming a person's got the, the attitude, how do you work with your team, both the front and the back, mm -hmm. in moving that bar up to the next level? Well, most restaurants or any business actually is usually very good at their own technical training. We know how to make sushi or you know, cook tonkatsu, tempura, what have you. So uh, our training you know, in those areas or our standards in those areas are pretty well set, but it's the way that we are able to deliver that training it, you know, to the employees and, and the interpersonal skills that really make a difference and set organizations apart, you know, uh, from each other. So that's why we, you know, use the Dale Carnegie training with our managers to help them be better communicators. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that's, you know, basic in the, in the basic Dale Carnegie course is what they call the magic formula talk. And it's a short, you know, two minute or three minute talk and you cover three basic areas. And so uh, by helping managers be able to be concise, clear, and, and drive the point home, uh, you're able to, to get them a skill that will help them when they're actually training you know, people you know, on the job. So those soft skills trainings are what we don't inherently have in our organization that right. we need to reach out to. Well, and that's always something that for whatever reason seems to always have a little bit of a second priority is those soft skills. Mm -hmm. but, but once you've got the technical skills down and you're delivering consistently, the difference is really going to be seen when you've got the soft skills to, to deal with the, the, the in-house and 
the external customers. Right. And in many ways, too, just reinforcing positive behavior. I mean, that's the, the easy, you know, behavior rewarded is behavior repeated. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, uh, managers and supervisors who know how to compliment employees at the right time and, mm -hmm. and provide clear, you know, compliments on specifically what those employees are doing are going to be successful. You know, I think you just answered the question I'm going to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Um, how do you, and I can see this as being particularly important in your business, I guess in any business, but in restaurant business particularly, consistency. Mm -hmm. You've got to maintain consistency, um, and how do you monitor and, and ensure that that happens? Well, in our, in our company, we have a lot of computerization of you know, food prep charts, and so mm -hmm. we take a lot of the um, mental calculation uh, off the responsibility of the manager so they don't have to worry about that, and then they can focus actually on the quality. Um, but uh, delivery consistently is important, and so having a, a training program and having a consistent um, uh, you know, core ideology or a mission mm -hmm. statement throughout the organization that everyone understands really helps uh, the organization deliver consistency. Do you have a, a coaching type of program? Do you have people to kind of mentor and kind of coach the others and give them advice uh, as they're going through their work day? Yeah, absolutely. Each department has a, what we call, a, we have server trainers mm -hmm. who are the best servers that we have. And uh, they're not only necessarily the best servers, but they're the best at you know, teaching other servers how to be a good server. So a, a great server isn't necessarily a great server trainer, but identifying those people that have those skills and then reinforcing their skills uh, so that they can deliver good training is mission critical to our, our success and the, the managers as well. That's, that's great. And Jan, does, is that kind of incorporated into your courses and how to set that up and structure that and make that happen? We do have um, coaching for performance uh, type of workshops um, and we also model that in our uh, uh, foundational Dale Carnegie course, be able to coach and understand the elements of coaching so that you can help uh, reinforce positive behavior um, or coach for alignment when it's not exactly where it should be. Right, and I, I can imagine that it becomes an important component because you can provide the training, but unless you've gotten, you have somebody there kind of monitoring and coaching to make sure it's consistent, mm -hmm. uh, right. memories are short sometimes. Right. People tend to forget. Yeah, and actually our methodology for uh, Dale Carnegie training is to not just give information that will result in, uh, will produce great results, but actually practicing it in the classroom environment and making sure that it's practice because practice makes permanent it doesn't make perfect so make sure that they practice they get the skill down and then they go out for a week and actually practice it for a week a specific skill and then come back and tell us how you did and so what you see is you see confidence building you see skills building and communication and human relations and that results in transformation at the end of the course very good. I mean, it sounds like a very comprehensive course, and when you go out and apply it, it, it works in the real world, too. Absolutely. That's very good. Now, you, you looping back a little bit, you've got a millennial generational um, program coming up here yes. soon. Mm -hmm. um, can you just spend a, a minute and tell us a little bit about what that is and what we would expect to get out of it? So everyone's talking about the challenge of having millennials in the workplace. More importantly, um, by the year 2020, uh, millennials will almost dominate the leadership uh, level of an organization, wow. and so everyone's that's scrambling. That's not that far away. That's, it's not, coming that, years. That's coming years. not that far away, Come and on. so everyone, which is a good thing, is trying to understand how do we adapt our work environment, how do we adapt our communication to be effective, both millennials as a leader as well as managing millennials. And there, there are fundamental differences, and uh, we liken it to say that when our grandparents told us, you don't understand what it was like to trudge in the snow two miles mm. to walk to the store to get a loaf of bread. Uphill both ways. Uphill, right. and that was in Hawaii, right? So um, we heard those stories when we were younger. Right. So are millennials hearing our stories about how difficult our right. life was. Every generation has difficulties. It's important to recognize what makes that generation different, mm -hmm. um, what has impacted that generation that has changed their values, different from the baby boomers, different from the Gen Xers. And then once we understand their strengths and what is different, then being able to meld them in the workplace so that we can be an effective team, whether we are 20 years old or whether we are 65 and still in the workplace. Now, I'm kind of curious, and I, I don't want to put either one of you on the spot, but um, what are some, I mean, I'm, I come from the baby boomer generation mm -hmm. and, and I have a son that's a millennial. So I know the differences that we have, but I'm, I'm curious, is there any, 
other types of differences that, that maybe I don't see personally, but you might have uh, offhand? Uh, what are the differences between, say, the boomer generation and a millennials? Do you know what some of those differences are? Yeah, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, go ahead. One of the key things is uh, baby boomers, uh, when, when they went to uh, get a job, they were reviewed once a year. And so you worked for that once a year raise, and then you were told whether you did a good job or not, and you're given your list of what you did that could be improved, and then you went away. And if I was like, lucky, I get to keep my job. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and you tended to stay with the company for a long time because you were really impacting the future of the company. The millennials today um, will not wait a year for feedback. They want immediate feedback. In fact, they want feedback several times, maybe five to ten times a day. And a day? A day. And the reason why they want that is that we have, we have bred a generation mm. that wants feedback so that they can realign, self-correct, do it right the first time. That is the mentality of a, of a millennial. Mm. They want to do it right. And the way they, they don't wait for correction, they ask for feedback. I can see some of that because of the technology. And as we talked yes. earlier, you get that immediate feedback. And, right. and mm -hmm. they've come to expect that, you know, right. both technology as well as an interpersonal level. Right. And they don't understand why they can't get it. Mm. Because they can get it in many other different mediums. Why can't they get that in the workplace? Good point. Mm -hmm. Now, we've got probably about a minute left, and I wish we had more time to talk about it. But, Tom, have you had any experience with the millennial? You've got multi-generations oh, in your, I mean, what's, what's some of the challenges that you face there? Well, I think as we, we started off at the, at the beginning of the conversation talking about millennials leading boomers, mm -hmm. because most mm -hmm. times you hear, you know, boomers like ourselves talking about the millennials and, you know, all the, all the difficulties you have dealing with them. But in, in, in our business, we have young restaurant managers that are in their, you know, late 20s or 30s supervising boomers at, at all levels in the organization. So the, the communication skills required for effectively managing, you know, up and down the chain yeah. of command are, are, are yeah. very well, important. And I can see, you know, and, and maybe I'm going to be unique, but as a boomer, if I was getting feedback five or ten times a day on my performance, mm -hmm. I probably would get bored of it pretty quick. Right. You know, right. I don't need that. Right, right. exactly. You know, um, you know, but I can, I can see where there just needs to be that awareness mm -hmm. of how to deal with different generations. Right, absolutely. Right. Very good. Well, we're going to wrap up here. Is there any final words you want to, you know, anything coming up you want to announce? Um, I guess you're going to have a busy holiday season. Yeah, Gyotaku is a, a family restaurant. We have, uh, you know, uh, entertaining people from around the, the country. Uh, you know, people come home to visit for the holidays, and uh, Gyotaku is a gathering place. We do a lot of parties or a great place to visit. Um, and, and bring families and friends together. And if people want to see how the Dale Carnegie programs actually are working, they can come out and, and see it first. Meet some of our managers, right? All right. Yeah, they're graduates. Very good. Well, thank you both for being on the show today. Yeah, uh, it was you. very fascinating. Um, I'm going to know now how to better deal with my, my millennial <laughs> children. So, very good. Uh, but this is uh, Reg Baker, Business in Hawaii. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 from 2.30. Uh, I hope to see you next week. Till then, aloha.